Hello and welcome to the 41st video in this series programming a chess engine in JavaScript. So in this video we're going to implement the skeleton outline of the alpha beta algorithm. Before we do that, in defs.js please add in a definition for mate underneath infinite here and it'll get the score of 29,000. And the reason for this is it needs to be inside the bounds that we'll have for alpha beta which will be minus and plus 30,000 because of it. that's our definition of infinite but it'll still need to be higher than anything we can get when we evaluate the position so any kind of extreme material imbalance or something like this so this will represent uh, our mate score so if we had something like a position like a mate in three then we, th this that would be 28,997 and 29,000 then represents mate in zero as in mate dead so Back into search.js, you remember that there's a placeholder here to say this is where we implement our alpha beta to get our score. And now above search position here, we're going to start writing in the actual definition for the alpha beta algorithm. And the way this will be done, I'll be placing a lot of sort of placeholder comments like this one here for functions that we'll then need to write to fill in. But I think to get a sort of a, a visual representation of how everything works, it's best to go about it like this. And again, sorry about the environmental noises today. It all seems to be uh, to be happening in, in good old Italy today. So our alpha beta takes in obviously our alpha and our beta bounds, our lower and our upper, and also takes in the depth that we want to search to. So before we do anything inside alpha beta, much like the perfed, if we've run out of depth, or our depth is less than or equal to zero, then we need to return the evaluation for the current position. So I'm going to say here, return, evaluate, which we haven't written yet, but we will be writing, and that will be the static evaluation for the current position. So material, position to pieces, things like that. Otherwise, depth isn't zero yet, so we need to carry on searching. Before we do that, we're going to implement a function which checks whether we have enough time or whether we run out of time or not. So it checks whether the current time is greater than the think time plus the start time. And we'll probably check this every couple of thousand nodes or so because the program searches, as you've seen in perf quite quickly. There's no need to do that every single node and take up a necessary processor time. So we'll do it probably in intervals of about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds, which is enough to be fairly accurate with the search time. Assuming that everything's okay, then we can now say, okay, let's take our search controller and the nodes. And we know we're going to now get the value for this position. So we can increment the nodes by one because this will be a node or position that we've evaluated. The next thing we need to do now is to get the, or the first attempt to get an evaluation without doing anything, searching any moves, is simply to look to say, see whether we've had this position before or not. Well, right, a function that checks for repetitions, because if we're repeating something we searched before, we just return zero, because the assumption is this line, we've already searched and got a score, whatever it may be, but if we're deciding we want to go down this line again and, and repeat, then we're probably wanting to get a draw, so we return a zero. And also we can check the 50 move rule also here, because if that's been exceeded, again, we'll just return a zero. Otherwise, there's one more little check we need to make. And we'll say that if the game board apply, oops, is greater than our max depth minus one because we only want to go up to 64 or in the case of zero indexing naught to 63 then we're also going to return an evaluation for the position because that's our maximum depth has been reached we can't search any deeper so we're just going to return evaluation and it's very very rarely that we'll end up getting to depth 64 anyway otherwise we're ready to start actually searching the moves so we'll set up our score variable and we'll set this to minus infinite and then the next thing we need to do, the same as in perfs, perfed, is simply generate all the moves for the position. Now, before though we loop through all of the moves, there are a couple of little things that we can actually do. When we're searching, we always have a best line that we might be searching. So say we search a position to depth six, we'll have a best line of six moves there. 
And what we want is when we start searching at depth 7, we want the program to actually search our best moves that it's found first. So search down the best line first, because that's more than likely the next step is going to be the best line as well. We'll get cutoffs faster and therefore search less nodes in the tree. To do this, every time we get an alpha cutoff, improve alpha inside our tree, we're going to store that move in what we're going to call a PV or principal variation table. And you'll see later on how that goes. But that means that before we start looping through our moves, we're going to do something called get a PV move, which is get a principal variation move out of this table. So if we've got one for the current position, then we'll search that move first, because it's more than likely going to be the best move in the position. And then we'll do something called the order the PV move, where we'll actually set the high move ordering score. You'll remember inside generate moves that we actually have the facility, and I'll just find the move gen and open this. Here you remember that we actually add on, at the moment they're all zero, but we've got the facility to add scores in here. And this is where the scores are coming in, it's with the move ordering inside alpha beta. And the highest score will go to a move which is a pre PV move because we want to search that first. So assuming that we've, we've done that, we've got our PV move score assigned, the next thing we want to do is actually search all of our moves and loop. But before we do that we need to define some of the variables which I'm actually going to do just below the generate moves. So we'll have our move num which is simply going to be used for our index in the loop. We're going to have something called legal which is how many legal moves we've made in the current position. And now critically we're going to define something called old alpha and set this equal to alpha. And at the end of our move loop, if old alpha is still alpha, then we know we didn't find a move that even improved alpha, so we, couldn't, we didn't actually find a best move in this current position. But if we did improve alpha, so old alpha is no longer equal to alpha, then we know that we found a best move and we can store that in the PV table. We'll also store the best move, obviously, which we'll set to no move, and we'll set also a variable move just to get out uh, the current move being made, so I don't need to type game board move list so often. And that's it, we can enter now the actual move loop. So I'm just going to make a little bit of space here and scroll everything down and cheat a little here and go straight into perf and actually copy the move loop code there and just make a couple of changes to the code. So we're using move num as our index. So we're just looping as we did in perf through the generated moves at this play. We'll then set our move equal to that move. We ignore the move if it's illegal and otherwise here we're now going to set our score. And we simply set our score at this point then equal to, and you remember from the alpha beta explanation video, minus alpha beta because we're using the negamax form and we have minus beta then minus alpha because we have to flip the bounds around and depth minus one. So if we start this depth at three, depth minus one will then be two and so on and so on and eventually depth will be less than equal to naught and we would return then our score for the position. Where am I? Here I am, good. One little thing we can do before this score however is we can just increment legal because now we've found a legal move inside the position. So we take our move back and now we can do a little bit of a check here and we can just say that if and I'll go up and make a copy here because it'll be faster so if search controller dot stop equals bool dot true so if we'd run out of time so if say in that check up there we'd now come back out of alpha beta with this now set to true then we'll just return a zero here because the way things will work is down inside search position we'll be breaking here before in, before we do anything to set the current best move found. So, and you'll see how this works uh, later on. But best move will only be set from line 72 onwards to make sure that we only set the best move for the best move found from the last completed depth, not halfway through a current depth. And the other thing that can catch you out often if you're not careful, or certainly caught me out when I first ever started doing these things was, you must put the take move before you return from the search here, otherwise the board state won't be reset to what it was at the root. Assuming that we didn't run out of time in the search, I'll just scroll down a bit more, 
we can now look at whether we've improved alpha. So we can say, if the score is greater than alpha, then a cheer, because we've managed to raise our alpha. Oops. And the first thing we look for now is whether we have a beta cutoff, because this allows us just to return straight away. So if the score is greater than or equal to beta, then we know there's no point in continuing, so we can cut off straight away. And the other thing we want to do here is the little statistics uh, collection. So if we're on the first move, if it's the first legal move in the position, then we're going to increment this fail high first from the search controller, like so. Otherwise, and for every beta cutoff, we'll increment fail high. And what this will do, as I explained before, this will give us a good indication of our move ordering. Because when we get the beta cutoff, the more often that happens on the first move in the list, obviously, the better, because it means we've pruned more nodes from the tree. And at the end, this divided by this, so fail high first divided by fail high, will tell us how often, in percentage terms, we got the beta cutoff on the first move. And when we start implementing the move ordering heuristics and scores, you can see what kind of a dramatic difference there is depending on how we use those. And it can make the tree a, a huge amount smaller just by making a, a couple of small changes. So now we have a beta cutoff. The only thing remaining to be done is to just return beta. But before we do that, we're going to put a placeholder in here. And we're going to call, put something here called update killer moves. Now what killer moves are, we'll keep at each ply a record of the most recent two moves that caused at that ply a beta cutoff. And they'll be called killer moves. And they'll be used inside our move ordering. And I'll explain about that when we start implementing them, how we start doing the move ordering. But assuming we haven't got, or in the case we haven't got a beta cutoff, then we can now update alpha to be equal to the score because we've improved alpha. And now, of course, we can set the best move found so far in the position because we've improved alpha. We can set this then to our move. And the last thing we need to do here is we're going to update history table. And what happens here is, as I explained, the move ordering is critical. And the general order we'll search moves is we'll search a PV move first if we've got one. If we haven't, we'll search through all of the capturing moves because they're most likely to cause a beta cutoff, capturing a queen or something like this. But if they don't, then we need some way of searching the non-capturing and non-PV moves. So the next thing we'll be searching is these killer moves, because they give us beta cutoffs. So we'll only be storing in this update here non-capturing moves. And then if the moves aren't a killer move, then we still need some way of trying to sort them a little bit to maybe try and estimate which would be the best move in the position. And sorry about the humming in the background from the builders. But the way we do this then is to increment a history counter for each individual move. It's indexed by from and to square. I think, I can't remember how I did it, either by piece and to or from and to square, I can't remember. But anyway, you increment that by a given value, say depth squared, each time a certain move achieves an alpha cutoff. And then when we come to ordering the moves, if, if it's not a killer, not a capture, not a PV move, then we'll assign its score from the history heuristics table. Like I said, later on, we'll start playing with the move ordering to show you the differences it makes the number of moves searched in the position. OK, so now we've got the full move loop uh, implemented. We get our beta cutoff and return straight away, or we have our alpha cutoff and store our best move. And what's to be done now after the move loop is we need to do something, and again, a placeholder here, I need to do something called a make check. And what the mate check is, is if we didn't have any legal moves, so legal state is zero, then we're either checkmated or it's stalemate. So we have to say, are we in check? If so, then return the mate score, minus mate score, sorry. Otherwise, return zero because the position is a stalemate. And the last thing to say is if alpha is not equal to old alpha, just scroll up a little bit, if alpha is not equal to old alpha, then another placeholder will store PV move because we found a good move in this position. And last but not least, end of the alpha beta function now, we can return alpha, which will represent our best situation for the current position for the maximizer. 
Okay, so that's it then for this video. That's the full skeleton implementation of how Alpha Beta works. And now we'll start step by step implementing the various placeholder sections of the Alpha Beta function before moving on to the move ordering. Oh, and one tiny little bit I forgot actually thinking about the move ordering, of course, is we need here inside the list to actually pick our next best move. Because what we'll do is we'll actually write a function where we'll have a look at the current index and the remaining moves in the list and if any of them have a higher score than the one at the current index then we'll swap them round before then taking the move out here so we pick the moves in order of scores assigned. Okay then, so that's it for this video. I hope it made uh, sense and see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.